My name is Alistair Lockhart. I'm one of the academic directors at CENSAM, the Centre for the Critical Study of Apocalyptic and Millenarian Movements. I'm also a member of the Faculty of Divinity at the University of Cambridge. This presentation is a brief extract from a paper I gave at the CENSAM online symposium on the theme of the Cold War and the End Times, held on the 4th of June 2020. The topic of my paper is a book called God and the Atom by Ronald Knox. The book was written in 1945 by Ronald Knox, an Anglican vicar who had converted to Catholicism in the First World War. He was an Oxford Don as famous for his crime fiction as he was for his religious writings. In his own way, he represents a member of a distinct class of early 20th century British intellectual. What is striking about the book is not only that it articulates the views of a high-profile and relatively conventional religious figure. At the time he wrote the book, he was working on a new translation of the New Testament, which he had been commissioned to write by the Catholic hierarchy, but that it was written immediately after the bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were reported in the British press. In fact, Knox broke off from his work on the New Testament to write the book. In a chronological perspective, it is perhaps the first public religious response to the nuclear age. It marks the beginning of the new political order's religious themes. It's a wide-ranging work, reflecting Knox's extraordinary breadth of mainly classical and theological learning. And though it does not analyse any particular theme beyond a certain point, it is not intended to be a work of forensic theology, it is rather intended to encourage and inspire Christians finding themselves under the bleak shadow of the atomic bombs. So there are a number of important themes. The first of these is, is the erosion of belief in God by undermining the sense of order in nature. The second one is the corrosion of faith, hope and charity. And a third is the potential for moral decay in a generation growing up with the unbridled atom as a social model. What I think is particularly striking is the diagnosis of a qualitative shift in the conceptualization of apocalypse. As Knox expresses it, the Christian virtue of hope has nothing whatever to do with the world's future. In a practical sense, it meant instead nothing more or less than a confidence on the part of Christians that he or she would obtain happiness in a future life. And to that extent, whether the world lasted ten days more or a thousand years more was no concern of ours. However, for the first time, a practical physical process for the end of the world, made more imminent by being in the hands of humans and not God, had become a reality. The conflagration is, by some accounts, now almost in the sphere of practical politics, Knox writes. But the alarming fact of the atom bombs are, in one sense, nothing new to Ronald Knox. Having lived through the Great War, when a great many of his former students and friends met their end, and having just lived through the deprivations of another world war, he felt the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki were a kind of signature tune after all that orgy of destruction which has been going on these past five years. And worse than that, in his words, it is generally accepted as a foretaste of the weapons the next war will be fought with. In its day, Knox's book was, it seems, out of step with the mood of the British nation, which was then exulting in a definitive end to the war and the promise of a new technological era. Evelyn Waugh, Knox's friend and biographer, said the book fell flat, and it reads much like a religious cry of anguish. While out of step with the national mood, perhaps, it was nonetheless prescient. Written more than a year before reports of the wider dangers of the new weapons began to appear, and identifying the key themes of pessimism and religious imagination that would be incubated through the Cold War, and which retain a prominent place in popular culture up to today.